Battleground Productions presents Brass, the audio serial, episode 16, Inside Voices. The year is 1885, but not one that would be familiar to you. For this is a world that differs in many ways from the one in our history books. For while the scientific marvels of our own 19th century were indeed miraculous, no scientist from our world ever possessed as astonishingly eclectic as laboratory as Lord Benjamin Brass, whose features include an area that looks oddly like a combination work table and operating gurney, and which today is acting as precisely that, holding the recumbent form of Cyril's half-mechanical manservant, Stevie. There. I've restarted the circulation mechanisms. The etheric battery should restart his oil flow momentarily. Margaret, can you confirm there's no bleeding? That's right, Lord Brass. The bullet was stopped by his inner casing and didn't reach any of Mr. Stevie's still extant organs. If that's true, why isn't he conscious? He's still in shock, I assume. And to be honest, while our friend's brain is still his own, I'm not entirely sure how much of his vocal facilities are mechanical. It may be some time before he starts to... Still here, sir? Very relieved to hear it, Stevie. Welcome back, Stevie. I can't move my legs. Be patient. You should have mobility in your limbs soon. The patches I've made to your system are just that. You'll need to move slowly until we can get you a proper mecha surgeon. Thank you, sir. Of course, my friend. You stopped a bullet meant for my son. It is I who am in your debt. Now, where's Drake? Here, sir. Report. The house is secure. The servants have been mustered and outfitted with small arms. Lady Brass and Cyril are on the first floor reviewing the defense systems. Our prisoners? Locked in a third floor linen room. More or less intact? I let Millicent give Danny a few kicks in the shins, but aside from that, yes. And I warn them both that if there's so much as a pillowcase uncraced when I come to collect them, there will be consequences. <laughs> that should keep them from any mischief. It certainly would keep me from any. What's the report from outside, Drake? I can confirm that both ends of Babbage Street have been blocked, sir. There's been no sign of movement on the thoroughfare since the shots were fired. That's a blessing, at least. We need to consider the safety of our neighbours. Will a general evacuation be necessary? Hard to say. How prepared are we if it is? In your absence, we continued to work with the serving staff up and down the street. It wouldn't be easy, particularly pinned down as we are. Yes. Have to take care of those snipers across the way at the Mulgraves. Just give the word, sir. Margaret, Gordon and I could move around from the back of the house. Mm, too risky. If our informant was right, there may well be additional enemies covering us from there. And I need you here in any case. Cyril and I could take them out, Father. You could, but you'll need a distraction. Our most pressing need is getting word out to the constabulary. With your generator running, is the teletype back on? Regrettably, no. They must have cut the telegraph line. It will only be a matter of time before... Yes, but time is of the essence, my dear. Aha! Of course! Why didn't I think of this immediately? What, Father? Regrettably, of course, it will be sheer luck if his unit is also operating. What is that, sir? It's the device that Nikolai and I have been working on. Our wireless transmitter. Wireless? I believe I told you that he's convinced that invisible waves of electromagnetic frequency carry not only light we cannot see, but the potential to transmit sound. This is one of two units we have been building to test this theory. Have your tests been successful? Yes. Sporadically. In certain cases. In any event, Tesla's unit is currently in his workshop, a little more than a mile away. We had planned another attempt later this week, but if he should have the unit on and operational now... That's quite an if, Father. Science, my dear, is always about testing our ifs. Are you sure this isn't just a chance for you to try out one of your new inventions? Ha! So what if it is? And it's as good a chance as any for us to send out a distress call. I can move my legs again, sir. How can I assist? Excellent, Stevie. But for now, you're on furlough. Mrs. Drake? Millicent? There's a group of men gathering up the east side of the street. Numbers, girl. About a dozen. No sign as to their intent at this point. Drake, go alert Lady Brass and Cyril. What shall I do, Father? Help me operate this machine. Wait till the lights are steadily glowing, then turn that switch and hand me the carbon transmitter. Very well. And you're sure it's safe? <laughs> Heavens! 
You end up slightly singed one time, and ever since, you have shown little trust in your old man. As the brasses begin the operation of the mysterious machine, in a small cafe on the most bohemian street of Soho, two friends of the brass family sit chatting, quite unaware of the fate of their friends. There we are. No, can I get anything else for either of you? No, thank you. Black coffee, as strong as you can make it. Thank you. Happy to do so. Back in a moment, gentlemen. If you don't mind me asking, Mr. Wright, what is it that you are adding to your tea? Balsamic vinegar. That seems unusual. Oh, oh, it is, Lord Whitestone. Due to the reconstruction of my face, my palate has been significantly altered. I am quite incapable of recreating the taste of a good Earl Grey, for example. But I have found that with a judicious application of lemon and balsam, this green tea is quite pleasant. I'm afraid I still find tea an odd concept. There seems little in submerging twigs and leaves and boiling water to substantiate the intricacies of culture with which the English imbue it. Oh, I dare say there's little in tea itself that appeals to the English. Your German has his beer, your Italian his espresso. We require neither intoxication nor stimulation, but we are a people whose social interactions are hindered by barriers of, of class and propriety. Tea allows us to undo our top buttons, so to speak. I do not know if I will ever understand the motivations of the English. Or of English women, perhaps? Yes. And one English woman in particular. That is so. So what is your matter with Gwendolyn Brass? Your reputation as a detective is well earned. A simple matter, Lord Whitestone. For I know the mark that young lady leaves on her suit as well. She has bewitched several of my acquaintances, and, as an extremely eligible bachelor, your romantic movements have been a topic of constant interest to many social circles. I did not realize I was under such scrutiny. Oh, there is not a creature in the jungle who is such a fearsome hunter as the belle of society and their dames. You know the brasses. Indeed. They are both my friends and, currently, my employers as I am helping in an investigation they are making into a person known as the Crime Minister. How goes your inquiry? Damnably slow. The man is ingenious in setting barriers between himself and all aspects of the day-to-day -day operations of his current empire. What's more, though I have barely begun my work, I have already received several veiled but significant threats. If it were not they who had asked for my assistance, I would abandon the case, but <laughs> one might as well refuse a summons from Buckingham Palace as, as a request from the family brass. They are a formidable clan. None pariel. So I have thought, and their daughter is to my eye the most extraordinary of them all. But I fear that I have lost my opportunity of wooing Gwendolyn. We had an argument, and ever since she refuses my card when I visit and returns my letters unopened. The nature of your argument? I'm still not sure. We were investigating the gambling den of Vincent Law, and she left me to accompany Mr. Law into the gambling pits. When she returned an hour later, her dress was torn, she was bruised, and she insisted that we leave immediately. And you did? Yes, and she hasn't chosen to speak to me since. Curious. Were you under guard in her absence? Yes. There was a young lady- Ah, yes. Most likely of significant pulchritude? She was pretty. And when Miss Brass returned, what was the proximity of this woman? She was sitting on my lap. Lord Whitestone, while I am in awe of how well you've adjusted to life in London society after your unconventional upbringing, I feel I must say that I don't think you understand women. I do not. How do I learn? That, my friend, is the question every worthwhile man should ask himself, even though it's entirely possible that there is no answer. I sent her flowers. A good beginning. And several letters apologizing. Any wronged woman thrills to the words, I'm sorry. And several gazelle skins. Ah. As proof of my might as a hunter. Where on earth did you get gazelles? I've had them imported onto my estate. Nothing like a morning hunt to invigorate a man. Do you hunt, Mr. Wright? When I was a lad. Never warmed to guns, however. Mm, neither have I. Oh. What do you hunt with? A knife. Oh. Not a bow and arrow. That wouldn't be sporting. They are just gazelles. I would not use the knife, but I must clean and dress them afterwards. Oh, somewhat minimalist philosophy. Look here, Lord Whitestone. While your impulse is no doubt chivalrous, I would suggest that there are more effective means of wooing Miss Brass. I am glad to hear it. Can you teach me? I would be happy to. Ahoy! 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 I'm sorry, what did you just say? 
This is Lord Benjamin Broad, and this is a rather urgent cry for help. Nothing. Where are you? I am here, in front of you. We are besieged in our home. A criminal syndicate is attacking our townhouse, and we have no means of calling for help. Can you see me? Of course I can. Quiet. I am sending this message on this experimental device with little idea of who may receive it. But if you have heard it, please alert the authorities. Our situation is desperate. Can you hear me in response? Yes, I can hear you. Not you. This is a transmitter and not a receiver, so we cannot hear you. Damn. But if you can hear us, contact the constabulary and send them to our home in Grosvenor Square. Please do hurry. This is Lord Brass, signing off. Goodbye. Wait. What? Lord Whitestone. Mr. Wright. I have just heard a voice in my head. Your conscience. Lord Brass. Your conscience sounds like... Not my conscience. I heard Lord Brass making a distress call. Do you often hear such things? It is unprecedented. So you don't believe you are... I don't know what I believe. Yes, I do. I believe in the ingenuity of Lord Benjamin Brass. And therefore, I believe that he was able to transmit a message across the ether into my automatic ear. What was his message? The Brass family is under siege. What? Where? At their home in Mayfair, apparently. Under sea? Some sort of criminal syndicate. We must alert the police immediately. Please do this, Ponder. I must do something else. What's that? Save the woman I love. Oh! And with the speed of a cheetah, Lord Whitestone has leapt out of his chair and in full bounds has crossed the length of the cafe and is out on the street. With a bound, he is on the roof of a passing handsome cab, from whence he snags the second-floor balcony of a nearby office building. Before Ponder can get to the doorway, the jungle lord has taken to the rooftops of London and is gone. My goodness, your friend has... Yes, terribly sorry. I'll pick up his bill. No need to, sir. That is, if you'd be willing to tell me his name? Lord Whitestone. Oh, a lord is he? Wonder if he's any interest in the lower orders. Meanwhile, back at the laboratory of Lord Brass. I wonder what the opposite of ahoy is. Do you think you got your message through, Father? No way of telling. We could attempt to repeat the experiment. I'm afraid there's no time, sir. The men who we saw gathering earlier have begun to advance down the street. Confirmation that they're hostile. The battering ram they're carrying seems to suggest so, sir. Very well. Best we join your mother and brother, Gwendolyn. Time to see what our home defense system is capable of. Battering ram? Snipers? Just how extensive is this conspiracy against our friends? And how can even this most preeminent of families hope to defend their stately Mayfair townhouse from such a force? And what can even the formidable strength of Lord Whitestone do to avail any assistance? Find the answers to these and many other questions when we next join in the story of Brass. Brass is manufactured by Battleground Productions. For credits and more information on Brass, including our films and live stage shows, go to battlegroundproductions.org and find us on Facebook.